is your board's a six layer board, isn't it? Does anyone know where to check to find out how many layers it is? If not, go to setup and layer definition, and that'll list all the layers for you. Okay? So right now we have six layers. One, two, three, four, five, six. The one thing I wish pads would do, and I've asked it for years, but a lot of people don't want it, is you can add layers, but once you add them, you can never subtract layers. But you don't have to use the layers. Does that make sense? Yes. So even though this has six routing layers, all we need to do is use four of them, and the other two we just aren't going to use. Okay, does that make sense? So what we're using is layers one, two, five, and six. We just are not using three and four, period. Now, layer two, did we set layer two up as ground? Yeah. Okay. So this is our ground plane, and this is our VCC, VPP plane, right there, right? That's PL, PL for plane, yes, yes. Now, all of your routes are on the top or the bottom, correct? You route on top and bottom. These two planes are these big slabs of copper. The whole thing is a power source. Okay? So you get you can bring power onto it, the connector or something, and you can make that whole plane one net. Or we can take that plane now and we can, if this is it, we can make a ditch around it and we just severed it and made it two different planes. And that's what we're going to do for VCC and VTP. Now, our ground plane, we only have one, so we don't need to do a ditch around it, right? Does that make sense? Now, when we hook a thermal, remember we went on to ground? We set it up as a cam plane, right? Once we did cam plane, it brought up that add net to that layer, right? There's another box that showed up over on the right-hand side, correct? And then we said we want that one to show up on that layer only. So what we have here now is we have a hole coming through the board right here. Okay? So a hole comes through the board. And if this is our, our barrel right here, this represents our pad, the lock outside one. The end one is that hole coming through the board. So right now, if I didn't assign anything to it, this can't get beyond my pad here. But once I assign it, it opens up an area right there so that I can be in there, just to that one layer only. And that's what that little X is. Now, you see an X on the top layer. Actually, you see something like this on the top layer, right? The little X that it makes. Okay, what you have now, see you uh, Wednesday, right? Okay, have a good. Remember now, regular route layers, what you see is what you get. Okay, if you have copper, then you're going to have copper, okay? When you generate and call it a cam plane, it's the photo reverse, it's just the opposite of what you see. If you see a line, there won't be any copper there. But if it's plain, there's going to be copper there. Does that make sense? That's the reason why that right here, if if you have this on your cam plane, we see something, so it's going to take the copper away and open it up so it can flow in there as we do that. Now. I'm hoping that once, what we're going to do is we'll go through this, oh, good luck with that, okay? We're going to go through this whole thing now, and then we're going to run four plots. And I think once you run the plots, you will fully understand how a CAM plane is generated. It might not make a lot of sense. I could sit here and try to explain it to you for probably two hours, and you probably wouldn't understand it still. But once we physically do it, and you see your plots, you'll understand 
why we did what we did. Is that fair enough? Okay, so even if you aren't completely routed, I don't care. I want you to stick with us and carry through with us because you can finish routing the board later. Okay? Okay, now. The first thing that I want you to do on this board right here is um, once you have it all routed, you can go through here and check for errors on your board. So it's going to tell you where it's too close, where you have a short or anything in it. And all you do with that is go to tools right there, verify design, so tools. Verify design, and right now, see the top one is the default is cleared. Just hit start. Right now, Kenston has zero errors. Okay, that's what you want. You don't want to see 15,000 errors. That's a lot to fix. It's doable, but it's a lot to fix. Okay, now, what we've done here now. We added these two resist, two capacitors in here, right? So on this first chip, I think we did this one together like this, didn't we? Mm -hmm. We routed out, ended with the via. We routed out, ended with the via. The only thing that, that could maybe be a little bit better on this here is these vias could maybe be closer into the chip. Does that make sense? That's all I probably did with my ground pin. You want your exit is to be as close to the pin as you can. Yeah. Just get in the habit of that. Now, what we did here now, we could do this a little different here now. I'm going to pull him in here. And I'm actually going to pull him in here. And I'm going to delete this here, just click on the trace and hit delete here, and then click there and add a video. And then we can move this in here closer. Now you see how close to my power pin my pin is? That's what you want. You do not want to start routing a trace and posting pins up. You want to be so that, that that part can jump down to that plane as fast as you can get it down there. Does that make sense to everyone? It's like if you wanted to power something or ground something, would you want to hurry and ground it quickly or do you want a, a long me meandering trace before you get it ground? Which one do you think is going to be better? Get it grounded immediately, right? Okay, now, I said this is our easy one, right? We have to put two caps over on the other part, too, now. So you recall, we did a lot of routing over there, didn't we, underneath that part? So we have to put those two more caps over there. Did someone have a question? Yeah. Um, how do we get the extra level to do? Okay, when you go to uh, view or set up, layer definition and you define them as a cam plane over on the very right there's another little box that says uh, associate nets or something right there assign nets click on that and then go to your list and pick the different nets you want to assign and they'll give you those exercises okay i'm having difficulty deleting those traces right now okay like I move the axis closer and okay. but like this. That's good. So the traces. I click the delete button and it okay. says command cancel. Command cancel. Okay, so we got that, right? Okay, you got that. So yeah, it's right there, hit delete. Yep. It says command cancel. Um Correct. Okay, bottom. Okay. 
You're in the pad's router. That's why. Instead of layout. Yeah, you got to be in layout. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't work if you're in router. Okay, did anyone get those? That's why it wasn't working right there. Did anyone get that first one cleaned up? That looks good. First one, don't, don't even worry about these there. Yeah, so. Okay, good. Now I'm going to show you how to do the second one then. We're we good to move on to the second one. Okay, so on layer five, you, know, you have ground assigned to layer five. Now we're going to remove that because we're going to assign BCC and BCC. Now on layer two, we're going to assign ground. That makes sense? Okay. Okay, we good with that one so far? Let's go to the second one. How do we move the capacitors again after it's already been placed? It's not let me select the Hit the tab key. Click over that and hit the tab key. The tab will pick things underneath there. Even so, whenever I do that, it moves the chip instead of the capacitor. Hit what? Right click. Okay. So you can you can go through a whole stack of traces and you can you can just start going through the pile and pick which layer you want to work with if you need to. Okay, so now we've got to get two more over here. So I'm going to pull this one over here and this one here over here, okay? Now, what we can do here now is I have to have by these two pins here. Let's do the easy one first, okay? You got to have a ground, a, a bead coming off of this ground pin right here, right? Okay, that's the easy one right there. Okay, now these are on the top side right here, correct? These traces are on the bottom side, aren't they? The blue ones here are on the bottom. Yep. So I'm going to put these in in this board here. Now yours is going to be completely different from mine, isn't it? Completely different. And so let me show you how I would do it on this board here. First of all, I need to make me a little room because I want to force them right in here, right? Now remember, these go on the bottom side right here, right? So what I could do here is I could actually pull this 
over to here. I get to pull this over to here. Okay, so far, so good. Now, what I can actually do here now is I could come from here now. I'm going to come from here actually and hit F2 and, and have my trace come clear over into here. Okay, I'm just trying to make me some space there now. Okay. Now look how much space I have. Now, can I put the cats on top of these traces here? If I capture on the bottom side of the board, I can, can I? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this one over here now, and I can put him right here. And I can put this one here now, right there, can I? Now I've got to get some beads in there, right? You see what I'm doing? So now I've got this ground in here, right? Now if that's too close there, maybe I want to put him out here. I can put him on the outside too if I want to. Now I've got to hook these up here, right? Take them out here. Click there. Click right there, but now this one's going to give me an error right here, isn't it? So what I've got to do some way is to figure out how to get these above it. So I'm going to click here, hit F2. Hit here, F2, come up here. Okay, so those two are okay now, aren't they? Now, if I wanted to, what I could do here now is I could come over here, W25, and get him right here. And then I could come out here. And I can put him here. Now that's they're pretty close, aren't they? So I'm going to pull him on top of here. There. Did I hook them up? I just made me a little space in there to hook them up. You bet now. And on each one of these. And we'll go to the top part. Right. Get it there? Um, for some reason, I'm, I'm on the bottom layer, but it selects the IC instead of... Okay, click right on this part here. Right on the outline of that. I am. Now click on the pad then. Now hit tab. There you go. Tab. Yeah, that will cycle through for you. Okay. You get that one cleaned up over there? Uh, pretty good. <laughs> now, now, what you've done is something really good, though. Let's look what we can do here. These can come out here. So we can actually have and put them on top of here. Thank you. 
want to put it right on the top there, you don't have to come down. Now, blue is your top layer, right? Yeah. Okay, so you can do that right there, can't you? Okay. Now, this This one needs to appear, this one here, this one needs to have this one needs to have that one. Can you do that? Yeah. So now you can do this one out of that. Okay. Hey, Kelly. That, that's okay for now. But on this one here, you know, um, can I just clear that up here so you can do it out? Okay. Now, what you don't want to do, see how you did this? You, did, you hook them all with the trace? You don't need that. They all have their bead. All they're doing is terminating into that flame. Okay? And so, see, this one here now, that's on the top. So, we could actually put him there, or we could actually probably put him maybe down here. And then see, now this too could be pulled up maybe into here. That makes sense there? Yeah. You, you, see what, you see what I'm talking about yeah. here, though. So, these ones. So, so you want to fix this. So, you can swap them up with the problem. Okay. And you don't need that so. Right, right. Because if you just get the fresh air, okay, so if you go to your net, and if we get ground, it's not easy to see. Okay. It disappears. Usually, it's just going to be something like this. Yeah. So, um, now we need to get rid of that one there. And let's get rid of this here, get rid of that there, get rid of this one here. And this one here. Now this is power, so here type in W25, W for width. And we come up here. W25, come up here. And here, these all here. Okay? And that's who they all have big deals on them, right? Okay. Yes, it will. Get your straight 
go. Well, I clicked on the bottom view and now I. Now, I go ahead and try to click on something. Well, and see, that's the thing. It, it selects the IC. Right, Whatever right. Now, if you click right on that pad, right on the pad, go to the pad. Well, now you can click it. Now, okay. tab and it'll cycle but I through. Can't move the capacitor. But cycle through now. Now, right click, move, or control E. You have to have the whole thing highlighted, not just the pad. Well, but the move command is what I didn't know. Right, or you can hit, you know, the control there. Yes, and that looks good. That looks good. So, okay, so let's go on now. Now, even though it's not the cleanest in the world, don't worry about it. You cleaned up. I want to get to a point where you see about planes. Okay? Is that okay? Okay. Now, what we have to do now, these, see these two big ones here? We have to put them up at the top here. Now, Kenneth made it too easy for me because see, I can actually bring this one right down here and stick in there. And this one I can actually put right here. But he made it super, super, super easy for me. You guys probably don't have it that easy, do you? <laughs> but again, the, this, these tabs are on the top, so you have traces going underneath it on the bottom, can't you? So it's you, just your top side, you don't want it. So let me, uh, does anyone think they have a real problem with your board? If you do, let me come over and we'll work with it. Anybody have a real problem with that one? What, what kind of problem? Can you fix those big parts in? Okay, so, okay, can I sit down for a second? Okay, so, first of all, this is on the top side, right? Let's just turn off the bottom side, because we don't care about the bottom, right? So we go to setup, display colors, and I'm going to first of all turn off the bottom. So that's all I've got to work with to locate them initially, right? So I can come up here now. I want this one here now. Okay, now see, see what I've got here? This color goes with that color, this goes here. So this one comes over here. This one has to come over here, right? Because there's your power we're trying to get to. So now I can put him maybe right up in there. Okay, now what I can do here if I'm too close here, look, I can pull these up here, all right into here. Any more room than that? <laughs> now this one isn't on a 45, right? So I'm going to delete him and then just start routing it here. And then pull him up there. Okay, so this one's fine here now. Now I don't know what we have on the bottom, but we'll, we'll be okay. Now this one can go right in here now. See, yeah, I can't fit him there, but I can rotate him now. But I want him in that orientation right there because I want my power pins closest to each other right there. That's why over here I put this one close to there. So there's never a hard board. You just have to look at it now. What we got one, look at the bottom side. Set up this way. Now let's turn the bottom on here. Okay, so. What I could do here now is I've got to get you some views in here, right? But look, I could reroute these down here to make it have enough space to turn back. You with me there? And to reroute them, the easiest way might be just to click there, hit F2, come down to here. F2.
have tons of room now, don't we? We'll see it now. I might give you the hard one. <laughs> <laughs> but again, all we have to do now is let's we can bring these, move these down, these down, these to split down here, and you can open up some corridors to it. That makes sense now? But this one we want to flip around. We want this so we have this. We have they go all the way through. These go all the way through. And out of them, they go to the ground. But it's a hole through the board, but it jumps out on our ground side. That makes sense? So, um, you know, all you have to do is maybe hold this, you know, here. And let's just put this in here. We can put him maybe down to there. Or you want. <laughs> just, just see what I'm trying to get at? So that's why I don't worry. I get the board route first. But the hardest thing is routing the board. If you cut the board, you can always get in and tweak where things go, clean it up. But you've got plenty of room for a couple of vias on each one of those pads. This one you can put three on. This you can move over. You can get another one out here. You can get three on. That makes sense? Anyone else think you got a problem, child? There. Okay. I'll be right up to the front here in a second. Okay. Okay. Let's on Okay. So on this one here now, we might get some beads around here. So we could actually move this one down here.
right over here. This part has to be put on the bottom. There Now I've got some others. You see how I'm looping them around? So you just have to. So if you don't get that one all finished, you can do the little thing you can do again for sure. Okay? So one more and then we'll go to hit the plane, okay? Okay, so you got that one easy enough right here. And we can actually clean this one up a little bit better. Here and get some more space here by pulling speed down here a little bit. All the way to where you want it out. And we can do this over here. Okay, so 
So this is your top lid room. Okay. Okay, that's easy enough. This is the bottom there. Okay. Now, all we have to do is now is I trust if I do this room so much that this moment that my son is going to go and I'm going to ask you to open all the other things. Let me check. So if I put a line in here. I would keep on going here. She literally gave open the feet to drop these to at least go across here. You can't get to get them back to you there. If I do that, it will open the feet. But right now, this is the right hand. Okay. So now I can see the right hand. Okay, let's move on here now. Okay, now this is a critical part right now. When you have a panel and you have a bunch of boards on a plane, you have a whole sheet of copper in there. If you share that copper off, where's that copper ending up at? Right on the very edge of the board, right? If you share the board, right? In the multiple boards, right? Now, let's say you take that board now and you it's, it's power and you touch a metal stud. What's going to happen to the board? It's a little short out, right? So I want to keep away from the edge on my power planes. Does that make sense? And so if I drew me a 2D line around the board, my power planes, remember, it's going to reverse. If there's a line there, there won't be copper. So I can force my copper to stay back from the edge of my board where I'm sharing at a certain distance. Does that make sense? And so let me show you how we do that now. So just hit home, get paste down maybe. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we want to go to, um, let's go to layer two. Change this to layer two right there. Okay. Now what I want to do is I want to draw me a rectangle and the width of that rectangle is going to be 30, 30 thousandths. Now, once we start moving that around, I want you to explain to me why I'm going with the 30 thousandths, okay? So let's come in here now to drafting toolbar, that icon right there. And you see where it says 2D line right here? Okay, well, come on here. Why didn't you work in there? <coughs> huh? I don't like 
that. Okay, we'll do it this way. Um, just come over here and right click. Well, click on 2D line here, then come over here and right click. So click on the 2D line and come over here and right click. Your rectangle right there. I don't have that drop down here. Did you hit the drafting toolbar icon right there? Got it. Okay. Then take 2D line right here, come over here and right click and hit rectangle. Okay. I want you just to draw a rectangle around your board, just something like that. And remember, this is on layer two now, isn't it? Okay. Now, what I want you to do now is click on that rectangle, right click, and hit select shape. It should highlight the whole rectangle right there. Now, right click. Did you get your rectangle drawn? I draw a rectangle and I right click it. Make right click, select shape. No, just right click, right click, and then select shape. Now right click again and go to properties. My rectangle's not showing up. Draw it. What letter are you on? There's you. Okay. So, let's go to Setup, Display Colors, you turn Layer 2 off. And you might have multiple rectangles now. And we want to make sure we provide Okay, so now, shape, really. Okay. If you draw one and it doesn't show up, don't keep on adding rectangles because they're there in the layers in the display color layer. Yeah, just come right over there and click down. There you go. Perfect. And you're on layer two. Yes. So now click on that rectangle. Then escape. Click the drop right there. Oh, there you see you can. You want to get out of drawing that kind of thing. Right click, select shape, right click. Properties. I want you to change that to 30 instead of 25. You want the width of it here is 25. Change that to 30 and hit OK. OK. Now I want you to zoom in toward the bottom about like that. It's not like it's like shape now. Oh, here we go. Did it work? Now, now it's bringing up something where it's cycle properties in the middle. Okay, right click. Properties. Get that to 30. Yeah, you'll get used to this because we'll do it an awful lot. Oh, change the width. So change, make sure your width is at 30. Has to be at 30. Okay. Now, right now. My grid is at five. You see where it says G5 right here? That's what you want to make sure you have five. How many of you do not have five? If you don't, just type in G5 and don't change it to five. Okay, now what we're going to do is this. So watch me as I do this one. I'm going to come down here and I'm going to grab the bottom here. I'm going to put that line right in the very middle of that bottom line. And I'm going to click up the arrow, go 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 15. Where did it put my 2D line? You see what I'm saying? So I just moved the bottom up to my board outline. So grab, grab the arrow up to the center of this one. And go click up the arrow, 1, 2, 3, 5, 10, 15. Now click it. 
When I click the rectangle, for some reason it changes its location. It escape. So, add me in. We just had to tweak yours a little bit. Okay, now, see that white line right there? That's my board outline. In reality, if I change that to one, it would be a thin line right on the very edge of that 2D line we just drew. And I went 30 because it moved it from the center to 5, 10, 15. Does that make sense? That's why I couldn't use 25 because otherwise, I as my grid. Does that make sense? I just find it easier to use 30. So do that to the other side of the board right here, this other one. So grab him and go 5, 10, 15, just like that. And we want to do that up here now also. Put him in the center, go 5, 10, 15. Here, come down, 5, 10, 15, just like that. So we have a 2D line going around our cam layer. And that's a 2D line, so there's not going to be any copper there. So when I shear that, my copper is going to be kept away from the edge of the board. Okay. Now we have to do the same thing on layer 5. Okay. But, um, yeah, let's draw another one on layer 5. So we want to change this right here to layer five. And we're going to hit QD line, rectangle. So the rectangle right there. Okay, now if your rectangle doesn't show up, it means that you turned layer five off. Okay. Okay, now what we need to do is we need to click the shape. And go to properties and change that. Well, it's already 30, so okay. And sit down here at the bottom now. Grab him. Go 5, 10, 15 right there. 5, 10, 15, that's right in the middle there. Now, what I could do is I could come over to this side here and go 5, 10, 15, to be right in the middle, too, wouldn't it? That make sense? I see I'm off one down here at the bottom, aren't I? There. My layer 5 shows upon the display colors, but nothing's showing up. Yeah, two D lines. We'll go to setup, display colors, see layer five. I, 
I don't I don't know I've never had it. Okay, everybody get those two 2D lines on there, okay? Now, this might take a little practice to get, which is fine. We'll have plenty of time on boards to practice it, but I, I want you to see what a plane looks like. Okay, now, this is what I want to do. We have our VCC and DTP on layer 5, don't we? Okay. So what I want everyone to do is this. First of all, we got to put Vs on these. So zoom into these big caps. Now, as a general rule now, the larger the cap, the more Vs to put on it. Does that make sense? If you have a little tiny cap and you put two Vs on it versus a big cap, don't you think maybe a few more Vs would help out to get power to it or ground it? It's only common sense, right? Usually, I just go, you know, from a small one to medium and large, but maybe one, two, three, a really large one, I might put four, I might put six or eight if I have the space. All, it's all a matter of getting that sunk down to those planes as quick as possible. Okay? So, what I'm going to do here now is I'm just going to come here now. And come out here and put a via here, and maybe a via here, and maybe a via here. And you know, I might put one up here. That makes sense? Okay. Mike, how was it that you switched the mode for add via and with via or not and with via? Okay, let me show you right here. Right click, whoops, right click. Because uh, right now I'm yep. not. So I can add in via? I'm not getting via. Okay, that makes sense? Mm. And let's do the same thing to the other cat now. I think more weird behavior we're following. Well, you might have to reinstall it on that machine because everyone else is supposed to be working all day, which we can do anytime, okay? So let's do the same thing here now. That looks kind of a wimpy trace, right? I'm going to go W25. W stands for width. That just makes a wider trace. W25. 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 
And then here, he's already wider. And I'll show you eventually how to change that to the wider trays. There. So I got four of these on each one of my large pads, right? Okay, now we're about finished, ready to start plotting here. We have to do one last thing to this board. So tell me when you have your Bs in there, okay, before I move on. Okay, do you guys get them in? Anybody not get them in? And that's okay. That's okay. Put them over the. Yep, yep. Because you know we can do something. Okay. Yes, you got it. Okay. Oh, put them on the ground here, too. Oh, the yeah. Yes. Okay. Get them? Yeah. Yes. Control click. Yes, control click. Yeah, 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 control click. Okay, okay, so. Double click there. Move out, double click there. Control click. Put there again. And out there, control click. Yeah. And do that thing. Okay. Okay. Now, there's a couple of things, you know, as far as via placements, but we can tweak that a little bit. You got the idea. Usually, we want to be uniform as we go around, you know, office. and you don't want your via touching your pad. Okay. But don't worry about it now because this is what I'm trying to get you to do now. Okay. So hit home. Hit the page down. Now go to setup, display colors. Now let's turn off layer one. See which way it was layer five, right? Leave five on and turn six off. Okay? Just turn everything off but layer five. Okay. Now, let's go. Did everyone get yours like this here? We're only looking at layer five. Turn all the other layers off. One through six. The only one you want on is layer five. If I get it to look like this, okay? Okay. Now, all these X's are your BCC and BPP pins. But we have to separate them, don't we? Zoom in to this one right here now. You can see the BPP or anyway, that is BCC right here. Okay. And then over here now, we have this color here. So they're kind of hard colors to see really on your board like that, right? Okay, I want to show you a little shortcut, and this might, you might say, well, I don't want to ever do that again. You don't have to, but let me show you why I do it, okay? First of all, I'm going to go in and change my colors to more brilliant colors so I can see them better. Does that make sense? Because right now I have some pretty dark colors, right? So what I'm going to do is go to View, Next. 
Nibbling. BCC, right now that's that, whatever color you want to call it. Okay, I'm going to make BCC on mine yellow. BPP, I'm going to make um, let's go with red. Let me go with that red. Okay. Now there, you can actually see them a little bit better, right? But these are hard to see, aren't they? If you do this, and you have 10,000 vias on a board, you don't want to miss one power of ground, right? And if they're small holes. So what I'm going to show you is how I, I've eliminated that to make it easier for me to see them, okay? So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of these X's right now. Okay? So I'm going to go to Setup. Go to Setup, Layer Definition, and then let's go to the fifth layer right there and go to a... I'm just going to remove them from there. And then I'm going to show you what you see. We just got to remember to put them back on there when we're finished, okay? which you'll, you'll see just a minute. So let's take both of these right here, hit remove and hit OK, and OK. Now, can you see those dots a little bit easier now? Getting rid of that X, you can see them, right? But there's no thermal on them now, so they aren't tied to a net. But I have to separate them with a 2D line now. Are you so, Mike, in layer setup, which button did you click? Assign nets and get them out of there. Assign. See, well, hit layer to five, because that's when we're on. Go to assign nets and remove them. But we got to put them back in a few minutes. It's going to get rid of that X. But now we can see the definite dot. So, so see, now you can see your dots. They're easier to see than these, right? So that's the only reason I do this. I, I take it off so I can see it better. Okay, so what I have to do now is I have to basically separate my yellows from my reds, don't I? Does that make sense? So what I'm going to do now on layer five, make sure you're on layer five right here now, okay? We're just going to start with a 2D line. And I'm just going to start a 2D line coming down, whoops, right um, path. Path will give us a line. Instead of rectangle, just hit path. Okay? I'm just going to start here, and I'm just going to go here, here. I'm just going to make some line right here. Okay? Don't even worry about it. Just make a line. Because guess what we can do to a line? We can cut, we can split it, we can swap it. Everything just like we do with traces, we can move it. Okay? So, let's look at what we've got. So, what I want now is, this is, okay, so it's separating these reds from these yellows right here, right? I'm gonna come down here now and I'm going to split this one out here, get ortho right there, split, you see what I'm saying? Okay. How do you end a line? Double click. Just double click it. How do you start a line? Just click it. Make sure you're in path, you have to be in path. Yeah, I select the line. And then path. Now come up here and click a point up here, get up on top of that blue line. Click there. Okay, now it's good. Okay, that makes sense? So just draw with a couple of curves, you know, angled corners in it, you know. Oh, okay. And then, then what we can do now is we can take and swap everything else. But now, okay, so here's so, so what we're going to do 
then to click there and right click to go split. Yeah, it does that, right? Mm -hmm. So everyone come over here for just a minute. I fixed mine, but come over here for just a second. I want to show you something here. Remember I told you to use the split? It's got the split. Okay, so let's say I want to split this line right here. So I click the segment, right click, and hit split. And I get that right now. That doesn't do me any good right here. So right click, and see right now it's doing a diagonal. I want to go on the split. But now that's not a straight line, is it? So hit escape, and then right click, split. That's how you get rid of that little thing and then you can just pull in there. Now every time you click here now, you put the default now is the orthodontic and put it back. Okay. Now I'm going to make it a little bit easier on you right now. This 2D line here only has to be 15 wide. Does not have to be 30. Okay? So change it to 15. So how would you change it? Right click properties, maybe? Yes. Click it, right click, select shape, right click, and go to properties. And change that just like the 15, just like you did when you did before. Actually, when I right clicked it, it has the width option for me. Okay, good. Okay. Now, and you said 15? 15, yes. Okay, so what I've got to do here now, okay, so uh -huh. I've got to get reds up above, right? I think that's what reds are over here, right? So this is going to come down here. I've got to split him to come down through here. Pull him over to there. Okay, so so far I have my reds here, my yellows underneath here, right? Yeah, I'm separating them right here on each one on each two on each side of my 2D line. Now, what do you think could be better here, maybe? If I maybe spread those apart a little bit more, does that make sense? I'm kind of close right there, aren't I? So how would you spread them apart? Go back to your design. Just go to setup, display colors. Let's turn on the top and the bottom. That's all we need, right? So I gotta move these apart right here. So maybe I pull him up here a little ways, and maybe him down here a little ways here. And then I'm gonna get here, I'm gonna tap, and I'm gonna move this out here. I'm just clicking right there, getting the tab key, and moving him out to here. See, now they're far enough away, aren't they? Now go back to setup, display colors, and let's turn off the top and the bottom now. Now I've got some good clearance between there, don't I? Do you see how I tweaked it? Right. That question. I I can't figure out how to move the line. It starts to move. Hit escape. It starts to move the line. Hit escape. Line. Click on this line here. Oh, yours is doing that same thing too. What's going on? Why is it? See, that's what he has with his 2D lines over here. Okay. Um. Right now, let's just break. 
Okay, we we'll just have to join the ends up. Does that make sense? If I go to this. Ah, okay, so, and now what you can do is see, now you can do yeah. that one. So, Thank you. you know how to fix it now. Mm -hmm. That's okay, but we can spread those apart a little bit. Go back and turn on layer one, one and six. Okay, and I'll zoom in here. And grab this one and move in up here a little ways. Move it out and up a little bit. So maybe about, maybe about right. So it's just kind of a fine tuning, you know, you stick them in and then say, if I don't like that, move them apart, if possible, if you can. Okay. Now, what we've got to do is we've got to do that same thing over here to these here now. Okay. So I have to keep my yellows on the inside. So I can actually... This is actually pretty simple. Put him over there. Yellow. I'm going to split him up here. Let's swap here. And I'm going to bring him right down through there. Does that make sense? Let's put two of your yellow on opposite sides of each other. Oh, I get it, don't I? Okay, so the yellow has to be up here, right? Well, that's a fine how you do. So I gotta spread those apart first of all and get some things worked around here, right? So what I want to do here then is I want red on the outside here. Let's see. Red on the outside, and I want to split this here now. To maybe do that something like that, right? But I'm going to spread these apart a little bit now so I can actually have some room to win. Does that make sense? So let's go back to setup, display colors, turn on layer one and six. Okay, so I got to just move these apart a little bit. So I'm going to pull him up to here. And hit the tab key here, move him over to here. So far, that's good here. 
And I'm going to move him maybe down to here. Get the tab key there. Move him over to there. I'll set up this link color so I'm now I can turn off the top and bottom again. That's the room between them, right? So I have all my yellows right here. My reds are all out here, aren't they? Correct? So that's my ditch. Okay? Are those yellows from the top right? Yeah, these here. But look, that's in that ditch right there, isn't it? It's in that piece of copper right there. You see how I've separated my copper now into two pieces of copper, really? Remember, it's a photo. Won't be any copper connecting that together. We severed it. So, how many different plates can you have on one layer then? How many different power planes or ground planes can you have on one layer? As many as you can want, as many as you need. Most I've had to deal with is 37 on one layer. Different voltages and stuff? Uh -huh. okay. Yeah. Okay. And so because some of them want their own powers, you know, source and so forth like that, you have to make a ditch for it. It all depends on the... But if you can do two, you can do 40, can't you? You just have to get the dots, the colored dots, in the right ditch, right? That's all you're doing. That's all we're doing here, isn't it? Now we got to go back and add those back to our layer six template to put that X on it. Okay? Did you see why I took the X's off now, right? So let's go back to setup, layer definition, and assign that and add back in VCC and VPP. Okay, but now they're harder to see, aren't they? And that's why I do it that way. Okay? Well, guess what? We're ready to print now. Oh, really? Yeah. This is what we've been building up to right here to show you actually physically how a plane looks and how a via looks and how it's tied together. Okay? So, is everyone ready to go now? If you, if, if you have traces, let's still print so you can see what we've got. You can go back and finish it, though, later. But I want everyone to go through the plotting with now, I'll probably do plotting about eight times with you because you'll forget how to print and plot and everything else. That's fine. I don't expect you to, to understand it and memorize it the first four or five times through. Okay? Seriously, I don't. Is it really that complicated? No, it's not. But I'm just saying what all my other classes have had me do. So if you guys do it in first or second, awesome. Okay? And You'll see it makes sense. It really makes sense. So I'll try to explain it as carefully as I possibly can. Okay, so let's go to probably ought to save your board off. So file, save as. Yeah, I have a good board. First board. I'm going to save mine on the desktop here. Okay, so let's turn everything on. So go to setup, display colors. Let's just turn, we want to make sure we have layer one, layer two, five, and six. I don't care if I have three and four turned on because we aren't using them, are we? We start getting, that's why we don't care if they're on or off. Okay, so here we go. What you have to do now is go to file, cam. If I see cam, okay, file cam. Now, so we have this, this table up here. We're going to add four different plots in here. 
So how do you think I'm going to do that? Add. Okay, this is how you set up what you want on each layer. First of all, we have our top route layer, we have our ground plane, we have our power plane, and we have our bottom trace layer, right? Okay. Now, I need to explain one more thing. If I put a part, let's say I put a part up here, and if it has a lead coming down through here, going through the board right here, like the through hole part right here, this is the top side. The nomenclature with circuit board layout has stuck with it from the ancient days. Okay, you would put a part on the top side, it would go through the board, you'd solder it on the bottom side. So, what do you think they call the top side here? What do you think they call the bottom side? Solder side. Now, do you have to have components on the top side, or can you put them on the bottom side and have them coming up like that? You can do that, right? But traditionally, when circuit boards first started out, they put parts on the top side, they soldered on the bottom side. Well, what and happened is uh, it was like a conveyor belt yeah. with a bath of, of molten uh, solder, and the PCB would go, flow, by. go flow, flow through, this, through the bath. But that's what is stuck with like solder side. It's just stuck with it. It's basically top and bottom. Okay, so you'll need to know that because we're going to run into just a little bit of it right here. So you just need to know, understand the concept. Okay, so let's do layer one first. What should we call the document, the file name for layer one? We could do layer one, component side trace. Does that make sense? Anything you want, just give it a name. Okay, I'm just going to call mine component side. I'll, I'll do it everything. So, um, component side trace layer one. How's that? Everything's in there. You don't have to name it that long of a name, but you can put component side layer one. Whatever you want. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, the document type right here. Hit the down arrow key. What did we do on layer one? We routed. So there's routing right there, isn't it? So click that. Of what layer? The top. So hit OK. Now, it gives you an output file name. What do you think this is artwork of layer one? That's what that says. Okay. So when you now we aren't going to generate files because we're just going to print these out. Okay. Now what happens is see where it says photo plot right here? We're just going to do a pen plot, so hit pen, uh, print right here. It does the way file name because we aren't actually physically saving a file. If you had round this board and wanted to send it out to Boardhouse, we'd do a file and send it out to us. But we're just sending it directly to the printer. So you're just plotting it right now. Okay, so what this means right now is this is going to print the board outline, it's going to print the pad. Does that make sense? Now, an easy way for you to remember this is this. With a trace layer, you should have one, two, three, four, five, six items shown up. And if you have six items, most likely you got it right. So when you pick where it says routing and split, it, it already shows what you needed. <coughs> you don't have to individually pick each one of these. <clears throat> now, can you add some more to it? You bet you can. Now, when I first started with pads, you wouldn't do this. You had to individually go and pick every one of these what you wanted turned on. So, you've got it really automated right now. Really pretty simple. That's okay so far? Okay, so now, let's go to options right here. 
Okay. Now, right now, there's your board right there. It's off the board, right? So the orientation right there, I could rotate it. Right now, it's a little longer this way, isn't it? Let's rotate it 90 degrees. Justification, I want it centered. See how I move that board right to my center? Just by using those two boxes right there. Okay? That's all you need to do in this one, so hit OK. I hit 90 and justification was centered. Okay? okay? Okay. Now, if I wanted to do a two to one, I could do a scaling right here two to one, but we don't want to. Well, let's do a two to one. Make that one two. It would just be easier for you to see instead of a, a smaller print on your on when you do a print. Okay? Oh, let's do one more thing. Hit cancel. Sorry guys. Cancel, cancel, close. Just put your name on here so when you run your print, you'll know what zones they are. Okay? Now, the nice thing about it is we can click your name and type it one and we can put on all layers. So it'll come off. So you just have to do your name once. So to do that now, you see up here if you are in the drafting toolbar where it says A B right there. See the AB? Mm -hmm. Get AB right there. Type in your name right there. Oops, I spell my name. Okay. Now, let's make your name change the size to 150. Whoops, the 150. Okay. Hit OK. And you can stick your name right there. If I get your name on it, does it have to be on the board or can it be? It can be off the board if you want to. It doesn't, it'll still print it if you put it right close to it. Okay? If I have your name on it, Okay, now what we want to do is we want to go back and check. So click on your name, right click, and go to properties. So what layer is it on right now? Five. So the only one it would print out is on five. Now look, if I hit this down, it'll be right there. So the very top it says what? All yes. layers. So all layers right there. Now, as I print every layer that I print text on, it'll print your name out on that layer. Does that make sense? I say there's a lot of little little things, and that's why we'll go through quite a few boards, and you will you will become experts at this. I can guarantee you by the end of the class. I can guarantee that. Okay. Okay. Now we got to go back to camp. Okay. Sorry about that. I didn't want you to have to get all try to decipher who's drawing for what. Let's go to File, Cam, Add. Okay, now I got to retype my name. Layer one. Okay, document type now is going to be a routing layer of the top layer right there. Change this to print right here. And you're going to do this for every layer right here. Go options. I'm going to center it first. And now I decide, well, I'm going to rotate at 90. So it kind of fits the shape of my paper proportionately. That's why I rotated it. Now, I didn't have to rotate it if I didn't want to, but it just fits it better. Looks like. Hit OK. Now, hit Layers right here. OK. Now, you see, remember that we had board. 
There's a board outline, and we had six items here, right here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. Six items right here. That's how that kind of relates to that chart. Now, there might be a time that I'll tell you to delete one from a certain layer. But by default, 99% of the time it's set up correctly for you. Okay? We always want the board outline to be highlighted here. So hit OK. Now hit pre preview selections right here. You just want to do the top letters then? We're doing one layer at a time. Hit preview selections right here. Now hit board right here. Kind of zoom all. Okay. So that is what you get to actually get out on your print right there. Okay. So what I want you to do now is close out this one here and then hit run. See what it says run? Do you wish to generate the following output? Hit yes. It might print to the back printer. I don't know why. This is printing there now. Um, you guys getting the uh, uh, sign-in account? Yeah, that's what I was expecting. Huh. I guess you know why it's definitely a Okay. Um, boy, we'll have to fix that on Wednesday. <laughs> Sorry, let me show you what these look like here, though, okay? Sorry about that. Someone send me a clip of a uh, copy of that and just email it to me so I can know what to tell the IT people. Would you mind doing that? Which printer is it going to The uh, 712. You see 712 on yours? Oh, okay. Yeah, so. So, my, um, if we back out of that, and we go to our print setup. Uh huh. Um, select the server going to probably this time we set it to Microsoft. Oh. Yeah. Which is why it's trying to sign it to the one note. Yeah, it's trying to change, change our printer settings. Okay, so just go to file or. Yeah, file, print setup, select your printer, and then okay. try to run it, and it'll be just fine. Okay, so go to file. Uh, for print setup right here. So right now, the printer name. Do you have 712 on yours or not? You yeah. have it on ours. Okay. Let me tell you something about the network here. It stinks out here. <laughs> You'll log on and be working and try to print. You won't see it. But if you save it, log out, log back on, it'll be there. See, I've been logged on all day long. That's why it probably kicked me off of it. That's why it's printing me to that one because I do have access to that one back there. Yes, 712. Yes, yeah, put that one, and then hit OK. Now go to File, Cam, Add, you can go back to the password. So go ahead and try that. Did it work? You want to move? Yes. This is not a paper. OK, we can fix that. <laughs> Now 
those are 609. 712. Yeah, it should be. Yeah, that's probably how it does Oh, yeah, I needed that, so. Okay. Now, so just hit okay. And okay there. Let's go back to file and cam now. Okay. Now let's add. Add, let's see, um, uh, layer two is our power plane, wasn't it? And ground. What? Layer two is ground. Oh, ground, ground, that's right. G R O U N, ground plane, layer two. How's that? Document type. What do we want for the document type for a ground plane? Cam plane. Cam plane, right there. Of what layer? Layer two. Hit OK. Make sure you hit print here. Options. We want to center it. We want to rotate it. And we want to scale it, right? That makes sense? Hit OK. Let's do layers right here. Now, how many do I have highlighted here now? Five. Five. So for a route layer is six, for a cam layer is five. How's that? Is that easy? That's not as hard as it gets to remember. Okay. We have board outline generated, so hit OK. Now let's preview our selections and hit board. So see, there's our outline that we put on that 30,000th line. So that's our setback. So where there's a line, there's no copper. Where there's white, there's copper. So all these vias here now, see all this copper now can get into these guys, but it can't get into these, which are our uh, ground our ground pins, right? That makes sense? So that's what your plane looks like. So everything that's white on there is copper. Everything that's solid black has a hole in the middle of it. But the copper can't get to that hole, can it? But when we assign it to a net, it puts that crisscross in it. That pin. You see why we did it that way now? Does this kind of clear it up a little bit for you? But when I shear this, I'm going to cut it right here on the edge right here. So I have a tolerance, right? Because we use shear. A lot of times it's literally a shear. A sheet metal shear, which is not really super accurate. Okay? Yeah, that's basically what it is. It's a foot thing. You cut it off. Okay? That's why we want to set that. Yeah. So let's do the fifth layer now. You can print this one here now. You see all these pins in here now. See, these are. Oh, See, these are all tied into it also, right? These are underneath your chip that you did your ground pins to. Okay. So, get okay. Let's add. This is going to Let 
layer three. Even though it's layer five in my actual stack up, I want it to be layer three, don't I? Does everyone understand that okay? But now look what happens when we do this. This is going to be a campaign of what layer? Five. Hit OK. Make sure you hit print. Options. We're going to 90 it and we're going to center it right there. Hit OK. I know I'm OK. So preview selection. Hit forward. Now look what just happened. You see that 2D ditch now? 2D line for a ditch? It's separated. You're playing that piece of copper now into two separate pieces of copper, hasn't it? So this is one source right here, and there's yet another source right there. So whenever you, see, whenever you say ditching, that's what I'm talking about, is ditching to separate your planes. Okay? Now let me ask you a question. If you had a supercritical trace that you were running on a board, could you add that to a cam plane and just put vias in it and do a ditch around those vias? Think you could do that? You bet you could. I do it all the time. If I have a really super one that I don't want any other traces by it, I just go down to my cam plane. Then I can make it a little wider and I could actually have like a, a two tip spacey trace or a, a cavity for that to run and generate. Does that make sense? You might need it. A lot of times, you know, I can generate it without. But if you need it, you can do it. Okay? So, go ahead and save this off here. So does that kind of explain what a plane is there? Just a little bit more for you. And why, if you look at your other ones, if you looked at your layer two, these thermals would be on this second row, wouldn't they? If you compare your drawings together. Can you see why? It's just whatever layer you assign those nets to, see a wind. Whatever, whatever layer you assign is the one that's going to come out on that net. Okay? And guess what? That's as hard as it gets. Now we'll do some more complicated routing and concepts like that, but printing, that's, that's as hard as it gets. So printing is actually pretty easy, isn't it? Not that hard. And then, but when you close this out, if you hit save over on the right button, and if you have to go back and tweak and change something, you can come back and they'll be saved. You, hit, you click it, run, click, run, click, run, and you don't have to go back and set it up all the time. Okay? That was what I wanted to show you tonight, how the cam plane works. So it's a photo reverse. Just make real, real, remember that on the cam plane. Okay? Did that make sense? Hmm? Did that make sense? About yes, it makes sense. Down? I just need practice. Okay. And that's what this is all about. It's all about practice. It's all about practice. Like, like for example, I mean, I don't know why I can't select my name. Um, and, and, get it it. To, and get it among the tool. Okay. Okay. There's some setting. Um, Okay. Uh, uh, staple them together, yeah, and turn and turn it. Okay. Uh, We're not done. We don't turn them in yet, right? Yeah, you can save them and finish routing it. Okay, but you you know how to do it now, though, right? That that's what we're after. Uh, is it on my front desk? It's 
computer. It might be up there. Okay, we went before. How the hell did I fix that one before? <laughs> oh, peanut. It's been a long day. I'm either early or I'm late. Uh, you're just five minutes early. Okay. So you're okay. Um, you. I know. We'll see. Have a good one. Okay. Yeah. I know exactly what I'm trying to find. Um, do, 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 do. File. Um, well, let's try this right here. You bet. Michelle, have a good one. Okay. Let's go to tools. Options here. General. General. Routing. This That's all set up. Okay. There it is. If ever I have this problem, just tell me to go to builders. <laughs> okay. And here's anything right there. Anything turns everything on. What class are we going to be in? This is the 20, the, the CAD cam. Okay. You just hit close. Okay. So some reason that default kicks you out of all these. So just hit anything close. And now you pick it up. So. So if I, if I have a brain freeze and can't remember that next time, just tell me to go to kill that and close. Okay? Okay. Thanks, Mike. You bet. Thank you. Yeah. Awesome. So you can see why we did everything now, right? Well,